Hey guys, what's going on, and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be picking up where we left off in the last Roman history video. So, Tarquinius Superbus, shown here as a demon, um, basically what he did was he killed his father-in-law, Servius Tullius, and usurped the throne of Rome. Um, he was also the last king, a fact which is not coincidental, because he was supposed to be, according to all the sources, an extremely cruel and manipulative man. One of the major things he did was uh, he arrested and executed people without trial, so just assume this is your regular average Roman Joe, um, and um, your average Roman Joe died, you know, because without trial, obviously, because um, he was um, a very, he, yeah, he was supposed to execute people without trial, without counselors, without anything, so uh, as you can see, um, your average Joe is now dead on the floor. Anyway, we're going to, um, talk about the first thing that Tarquin did during his reign, which was, obviously, kill a bunch of people, as, especially the people that supported Servius Tullius, he had them killed or banished, and, uh, the next thing he did was he called most of the leaders of nearby Latium to a meeting, um, and he made them try pledge allegiance to Rome. Now, this guy, um, whose name is Turnus, he's, he was a major Latin leader, and he was, um, inspiring the people of Latium to revolt and not, like, pay obeisance to the Romans. Um, so what Tarquin did was this. He bribed, he bribed Turnus' servant, shown here, to, uh, sneak a sword into his house. And, uh, then he said that, uh, Turnus was plotting to kill him, and he took all of the Latin delegates over there, um, and they found the sword, and he was like, See, that's proof! You should all kill him now! So, they killed him in a really gruesome fashion, so what they did was they plopped him in a lake, put a wooden, like, box around his neck, and then started throwing stones into the box so that he dr until he drowned. Um, that was really horrific, and also that was the end of Turnus, and um, Tarquin's dominion was even further extended. So I'll just uh, show you guys that he's killed. Alright, there we go. So as you can see, Tarquin was a fairly ruthless leader. Alright, so now we're going to talk about one of the most notorious episodes in Tarquin's reign. So, Tarquin was besieging the Latin city of Gabii, and the defenders wouldn't let him in, and his soldiers failed to breach the, breach the walls, so Tarquin devised a cunning plan. He was going to um, pretend to beat up his son, Sextus, and then se send Sextus over to Gabii, um, obviously Sextus crowed about how he was so badly treated by his father and he wanted to rise up in revolt, um, the people of Gabii ate that up and they decided to put him in overall command of their armies. Uh, Sextus didn't know what to do next, so he sent a messenger over to Tarquin. Tarquin didn't answer the question, but merely as he was supposedly walking in a field, he cut off the heads of the tallest poppies with his stick. Sextus took the hint, and cut off the heads of the quote-unquote tallest or most prominent Gabiites, and killed or exiled all of them. So, there we go. And that was one of the most notorious episodes of Tarquin's reign, because it showed how cunning he was at times, and it also showed the cunning of his son, Sextus. Alright, so now we're going to be talking about the most notorious events of the Roman Kingdom, and the one that means that we don't remember the kings as much as the Republic, which would succeed it. So, Tarquin's son, Sextus, who we, who we saw earlier um, trying to sneak into Gabii, he was basically on a campaign with his father and when he saw a woman, and for the sake of not getting demonetized, I'll just say the the woman's name was Lucretia, and uh, after Sextus was done doing whatever it is he did, um, Lucretia um, told her um, told her husband Colatinus with the C on his hat and his friend Brutus with the B um, all that had happened, and then committed suicide. So.
Yeah, that was just to preserve her honor. I'm not going to necessarily describe what happened, though. Um, yeah. So, Brutus and Clatinus were justifiably outraged by this, and decided that they didn't like the kingdom anymore, and they wanted their own rule, so... Um, Brutus and Colatinus got elected as the first ever Roman consuls, um, in around 509 BC. Now, Tarquin was enraged about this, as a matter of fact, since he was the king, um, and he, before openly attacking the newly formed Roman government, he tried several tactics, um, including, um, turning some of the Roman senators to his side, in the course of which Brutus had to actually execute some of his children for, um, being involved in the plot. Now, Brutus and Colatinus, um, spent a little bit of time in consulship before Brutus said, in a shocking reversal of events, that Colatinus had to go into exile because his name was Tarquinius. That meant he was related to Tarquin. He was, as a matter of fact, related to Tarquin, but very only very distantly, and this was an absolute piece of hypocrisy from Brutus, who was Tarquin's actual nephew, as opposed to the more, much more distant cousin-nephew thing that um, Colatinus was. So, Colatinus went into exile, he wasn't happy about it, whatever. Anyway, so then, um, Brutus decided to make war on Tarquin. Tarquin um, had at his disposal many Etruscan auxiliaries, so here's a couple of them shown here. Um, and he decided to fight Brutus. Um, Brutus and the newly formed Roman Republic won, but in the course of the fighting, Brutus died. And I'll just do this. And so, therefore, even though he died, the Republic lived on, and the Etruscan auxiliaries were soundly defeated. Tarquin withdrew and just ran away. His son Sextus was also being pursued, so in um, an ironic twist of fate, he went to Gabii to seek shelter. The The citizens were not very enthused to see him back, and uh, he was also killed. Um, but uh, Tarquin wasn't done yet. The next thing that Tarquin was going to do would um, inspire one of the greatest legends of the Romans' time. Um, so he enlisted another Etruscan king, whose name was uh, Lars Porcena, and to attack and try and conquer Rome. Um, supposedly, all of his vast horde of Etruscan auxiliaries were held off by one man, Horatius Cocles, over a bridge, and the Etruscans were denied the passage. So, we don't know whether um, Porcena actually conquered Rome or not. Modern scholarship suggests that he did, but uh, we're, we're still unaware for sure. Now, um, Tarquin withdrew. He, he, a couple of years later, he'd make one final attempt to destroy the Roman Republic forever, and it would fail. So, but, uh, mostly, um, for now, things had gotten off to a fairly exciting start. Uh, if you'll, you should probably remember the name Brutus, it'll come up much later. Another famous legend um, comes from the Etruscan king Lars Porcena, who Tarquin had commissioned to um, re-enter Rome and reinstall him as king. So, obviously, Porcena was posing a major threat to the city. He had a lot of soldiers, who I'll just create here. Here's his like, bunch of soldiers, and, uh, the S Roman Senate was not at all happy about this, so they sent an assassin, a guy named Gaius Mucius, to go and kill the king of the Etruscans, so Mucius snuck into their camp, and, uh, unfortunately there were two people, the king and his scribe, who looked very much like the king, and, uh, Mucius and his, um, zeal unfortunately killed the scribe instead of the king, um, the king then sent a couple of his soldiers to go capture Mucius and uh, question him. Um, Mucius wouldn't tell anything, so uh, and he said he would prove his loyalty to Rome by sticking his right hand in a fire. Um, the right hand was badly burned, but Mucius showed no sign of pain. So, an entirely bemused Porcena, who didn't ask him to do this, by the way, 
we sent him away saying, you know, you like uh, you've done more harm to yourself than I have. Um, from that day on, um, Gaius Mucius became known as Scaevola, which basically in Latin means lefty, and um, that was the story of another famous Roman legend. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you appreciated the video, and I'll see you guys next time.